All right, I'm gonna do a quick review of the this end game of Forever Stranded. So in Forever Stranded, you start out in this um, like crash shuttle thing. That's what I need. There's a whole <laughs> the story's neat. You start out here with nothing. You have to manage your um, thirst and heat and hunger. And it's got that mod where you can't eat the same thing over and over and over, which is frustrating. So it's very hard when you start out. You start out, uh, I think maybe I started out in this room. Um, you have to make these things, these cooling coils, uh, to keep you from overheating in this desert. The All of it is desert biome. Um, so anyway, I made this one room that I could keep cool because the rest of it over here I broke immediately. So I think probably the first thing I did was um, made a cobble generator. Well, I manually sifted things over here for a while. Um, and then I automated that the best I could with this uh, item, item collector and a uh, mechanical user. And then when I had enough materials, I made a cobblestone generator, which then I then fed into these automated sifters and compressors and hammerers, all those things. Um, so I have since obviously done a lot more. Uh, got lava production from there, from another cobble generator, which fed these lavas, these magnetic generators, I mean. And these were the uh, primary source of energy for the base. Um, I have since made a much larger lava pool and I still use a lot of lava. Um, let's see. Okay. So next after that, I went outside. I made this little farm so that I could get trees and sugar and rice and things like that. I would then put the trees, all the stuff from the trees, I would put into these uh, barrels for composting. And then I would make them into dirt. I eventually tried to feed them into the object submission station, which is broken in this mod pack. So I've been just kind of storing my, my quest stuff. Uh, this worked pretty well. This was an automated farmer, farming station. Um, and I would just come out and put shears in it every now and then. I stopped using this one, so I've, I've not managed this in a while. I don't know why it's not. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I've got an unbreakable paper hatchet in there for the trees. And then I had, I thought, an unbreakable hoe in there, but maybe not. Um, this is jungle wood. I don't know how I got it. Okay, anyway, I've got a quest where I've got to find a juggle sapling, so hopefully this will give me one. Um, so here are my thing where I made cold coke and then steel. I just did it manually. Um, I haven't had a ton of use for steel. And there's the creosote oil. So over time, I got this um, thirst quencher and this temperature regulator that lets me explore further out and i was able to let's see i found i made a road all the way to this city out here this was how i kept the base safe because this does have blood moon um and so they just <laughs> mobs attack like crazy so i did i did conveyors which are pretty cheap all the way around the base into stone spikes so blood moon would happen, everything everything would eventually be funneled onto spikes as they attacked me. I then upgraded to this kind of storage with all the drawers and everything. And then I uh, upgraded that significantly. I built a uh, uh, mob spawner. This is the mob spawner. 
it was this level. I at some point needed uh, experience for something, so I changed all these to gold and never changed them back. But this mob spawner, I think they spawn right around here, and then they're pushed back and down and into that. And then I added several more layers to it, uh, and everything gets pushed back down onto those spikes. All of this stuff goes to here, where it's sorted into mob drops. <clears throat> I've eventually voided most of these things because this chest here was uh, getting full. And then the uh, flesh that goes into there, made another little room back here, it goes back here, uh, which then goes into a death generator which I've now upgraded and it does pretty well. And then this is bone, which is used for bone meal for the farms. And then I've, <laughs> I have this weird thing. I don't have a very big filter, but I had a lot of small filters. So I filtered a bunch of stuff onto different sides of this same box and threw it away there. Uh, it was my experiment with a tractor, but I didn't want to do that. So then I made a a wood farm, which got much, much bigger, and then a uh, slime farm, because I eventually started running some of the base off slime. I like using slime. It makes, you can see it's 13,000 RF. Um, for the milk, I use this mechanical user, which milks these cows. And I just do that with conduits. Um, this can only extract buckets, that can only extract milk. And so that keeps that going. This crafts the uh, congealed slime into slime balls, which then goes into here. And then goes into uh, this buffer, which eventually goes down into the bigger buffer. You can see I have a water wheel down here. Down here. Uh, so I did make a water wheel that was like five RF per tick or something. It's not. Whatever. Here's my power. There's the death generator. I can't get too close to it. It will kill me. But I've got just some upgrades in there. Um, I can still upgrade that more. So I see I made the mob generator and then eventually I found a place with a uh, Enderman spawner or I made an Enderman spawner maybe who knows uh, I kill that in here with a compressed with a killer Joe with a, an unbreakable sword in it and I make all of this uh, nutrient in the main base, pipe it to this uh, ender tank. So that makes all the ender pearls and blaze that I need. Those both spot in there. And then up here is the water tank. And if I turn this on, it spawns and kills squids constantly. This is they just fall, <laughs> fall out. That is powered by this. App. I found that this one, this size cell, photo cell, will power it with no problem. I fall onto the spikes. I fell onto a creative spike uh, not too long ago and I lost everything I was carrying, which included several backpacks full of stuff, which was frustrating. So, um, after the farming and the mob generation, I made these things, these ground traps, I spawned in some chickens and cows and bunnies and things. And I made this little area so that I can spawn in like, what is that? That's cows. These are rabbits. Those are wither skeletons. Squid. More squid. I don't know why do you just mean squid? But they just hit the conveyor belts, go into these bungee, whatever. All of that is run off of just this 
Well, it was. It was thrown off of just this photo. So I've recently connected it to the main power supply. Uh, I will sleep. <laughs> you see lots of this. Uh, whenever something compressed spawns, it shows you when it dies. Um, I now have another spawner station over here. This is where I've used the only compressive. I have I have more of these creative spikes uh, from a quest, but I don't use them the whole time. I like them though; they just instantly <laughs> instantly kill whatever, unless you actually fall into it, which is not fun. Um, okay, so I'll show you what I'm doing. So I found this underground base and I converted it into several things. Like this is where I do my lava. All these crucibles feed into this drum. So I've got four million buckets of lava. Just go into there. It makes lava faster than I can use it. This is the Woot station. It makes nether stars. It's also powered off nether stars. There's another star generator back there, which will kill me if I get near it. Um, but I don't need this many nether stars, so I usually will turn it off. Uh, I'll just turn off the extraction of nether stars into the generator. It'll run for a little while, keep building up, and then it'll just kind of peter out. This is my enchantment station, or enchant things for all these uh, upgrade speeds. I just put whatever I need in here, so if I need uh, like the iron, I'll put iron in here and it'll just kind of pull out what it can make and then put it back in there. Um, this is something over here. nothing over there. That is a huge station I'll tell you about in a minute. So this is the garden terrarium. I just found this and made a teleporter to it. This already exists in the world. I would just come through every now and then and grab some food and then go put it back in my kitchen. Over here. Uh, just store food in there. I think I. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had that picked up by. Uh, whatever. Anyway, and then when I get hungry, I just sort by saturation, find something I haven't eaten recently. Like old world veggie soup. Just double click it and get it. I am currently going through these quests. I've done all of the quests all around except for I'm saving up diamonds, lapis, gold. That may be done. Um I am doing let's see. Look. So the quest Thank you for turning the quest is broken in this pack. So I'm using these quantum storage units. This has 207,000. So I've got 800,000 more to go for that. Uh, I have collected all of the cobble that I need and dirt. I think I changed these. I'm not positive. I, well, I know I changed this one to just be a checkbox. But I think it may have been 10 million and I changed it to 1 million because that's just silly. And I made these 10,000. I don't know if I made them 10,000 or if they were 10,000. I don't remember. It's been a while. But um, that's enough. This one is still set to 100,000. But I need 20,000 blocks of diamond to get this one. I don't. I guess I'll do the rainbow generator when I get that. And then I've got to do the saplings. This is why I need the jungle sapling. So I did. I finished sand, and then I'm using the million that I got million sand I got to create these um, what is that called? whatever that's called sandstorm so I do that with a little tiny ME system just a controller and an assembler and the assembler just has one encoded pattern a bunch of acceleration cards and it pretty much just makes it as fast as I can pump it in um, and then the assembler's output output directly so it pops right in so that's happening pretty fast I don't expect that to take a very long time 
the dirt quest took forever um even at even at 1 million i, don't, I think it's maybe set by 10 million for default but so i did that by composting primarily until i figured out this trick which i will show you i had lots of trees i would take the trees let me show you what i did underground base all right so i would take the trees they go here and then i would saw them which makes sawdust sawdust you can put into these wooden barrels and turn them to dust and all of the wood that it made it would then pulverize down to more sawdust and then that sawdust would go into this ender chest with the leaves anything that you can uh, compost and then go into these composters which i eventually made just tons of them out in the by the main base uh, i thought i was hitting a um my bottleneck here was the pulverizer, so I added a whole bunch of those. I then figured out the trick. So, using these assemblers and another little ME system, you can make, you can put gravel, two dirt, and that'll make a uh, coarse dirt. Two coarse dirt together makes a dirt slab, <clears throat> and two dirt slabs together make dirt. So you end up using two dirt to make four dirt. So I do that very quickly here. Everything is fully upgraded. Um, and so all of that goes into this chest, which then goes here with a higher priority. So this stays full so I can always make dirt. And then any overrun goes into here, which there's significant overrun because this is also where the uh, composters go. I had an analog version of this set up over here, uh, which was very frustrating to deal with. I used all these analog crafters, and it would go into this auto crafter, which uh, can get jammed. And it would, it'd get jammed all the time. Even upgraded fully, it would just get jammed all the time. And so I would have to come out and throw away precious dirt so that it could create here. And then this, if it ran too fast, would just be full of dirt slabs and wouldn't accept more dirt it's kind of a nightmare um so i've abandoned most of all this this is cobble generation for the gravel there's four of those and the gravel i make as fast as i can with these speed upgrades oh, so what these do so gravel and sand get stored um, and then this gravel gets compressed and then sifted because I need diamonds for a quest. Uh, so it gets sifted and just thrown straight into my white 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 ME system. This has tons of stuff going to it all the time. Um, is there anything interesting there? No. So when all of this um, iron and gold, which I'm still also collecting, iron, um, oh, I don't have any, that's good. So it makes all that ore sand and stuff like that, and that needs to be smelted. So I have a smeltery bunker here, which again, I found these bunkers, and then I just converted them to other things. So there, here's a seared furnace that's uh, huge. It just, accepts lots of things all at the same time and so all of the sands and irons and ores and stuff or gravels they all go into here then they get cooked down and then um, we've got a filter where only these two ores can come back to the system this is an interesting room this is um just a smeltery it takes I've got an inner chest that goes back to the main base and I would just dump in gold, uh, gold armor and things, which would go to the repairer, and then go in here, be melted down, converted to an ingot, and then sent back to the system. That was working so fast that I needed a buffer chest, but I don't know why that ever happened. This is where I make the unbreakable 
things. Just make that, and then we put a bunch of reinforcements on it. I think it takes five. This room is for. <laughs> this is stupid. This room is for. Um, made this whole thing just to make energetic alloy. Let me grab some gold and I'll show you. Um, I'll put five stacks in there. I have the teleporters. Weird. Okay. So, here's what happens. So, I put coal in there when I need to. If I put coal in there, it turns into coal coke, which goes over here into this uh, big huge crusher, crushes it into crushed coal coke, which then goes into here, coke dust, I mean, goes in there. When it gets eight of them, it makes a hop graphite ingot. Um, there's a counting thing on there, which I failed at. It's supposed to wait till it gets four and then put them in this hopper, but it works either way. And then the hopper makes it into these graphite electrodes, which go up here. I did found that you can you can enchant them with unbreak, unbreaking and they last a lot longer. So I didn't need to make as many as I had before. But all of these machines just make this, that one thing. So then I have this huge arc furnace where I feed in goldstone, gold, and redstone. And as long as it has gold, it will very quickly, you can see it's... It processes, well, it works faster if it's like this. Processes all of this all at once. And that makes this energetic alloy. Because you can make vibrant alloy faster uh, in like a another machine. But this one always takes forever. And so every now and then I'll just come and drop several stacks of gold into this thing and make a bunch of energetic alloy. And that keeps me... Um, Pretty set usually. I have 600 and I have about 700 of them, so that's not bad. Because I use those to make vibrant alloy, and I mean to make vibrant photo, photo cells here, because that's what I use for my. Um, I was trying to make my main source of energy be that. Let me get naked, put on my spacesuit, put on my spacesuit. That's bad. All right. Okay, so I go out in space, and I've got this big thing here making 27,000 RF per tick. The efficiency is always 100 on these. Uh, I'm going to make it 22,000 RF. You know, it doesn't matter. The efficiency is always 100 on these because we're in space above the atmosphere, I guess is the reasoning. I don't, I don't know, but in space, it's always sunny. So I guess maybe we're orbiting the side with the sun. Um, so I store all those there and then I put them in a dimensional transceiver that sends it to main power and then that goes back to the main base. So I always have to remember to put my... I did not really like the space thing. I mean, it was it was interesting, I guess, but... Uh, I don't even know where I am. I'm around some some planet, but... What you do... <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. This is very complicated. But you have to try to find this one planet that's... Um, several systems away, I guess. But I did. I did find that planet. It is right here. Try to be on this. It is spoiler alert. It is Sol fifty one, I think. But one of the goals is you have to get this light wood. You have to get one of the uh, saplings from it. Built a little house here. It's mostly worthless something to do and then I have this little base where I'm stored there all right so that is it I guess there's um I have down here 
my reactor it doesn't make a ton it makes 11,000 RF per tick it stays pretty full from all the sifting I've got my uh, grid power these are not mine these are my daughter's she joined in couldn't fly so just spawn those in uh, that one's mine and I have another one somewhere else I got a couple more dragon eggs from a quest I have some queries down here. This is a void ore miner. And then down here, I've got a quantum quarry, which takes so much power to use, I don't use it very much. And a void ore resource miner. These have just been kind of running since very early in the game. And I don't even remember or know really what I get out of them. Um, I think I needed mica or something. This is set to the desert. I also have a couple other quarries. Or I have an extreme hills, uh, the nether, a moon one, and alien forest. So, I've just done these. These are uh, tier four void ore miners. They work pretty quick. They go straight into the ME. This is a storage room down here. Stores. Uh, just drawers full of crap that I can void. Uh, like these, you know, there's always so many bows and all these packs. This thing just takes stuff out of the ME and makes it, just compresses it and puts it back. Not super exciting. Um, I think that's mostly it. This is all the stuff I needed to get into space. I had to, either I had to make a bigger launch pad over there. Uh, but you know you have to make oxygen and nitrogen rocket fuel i did automate rocket fuel um, so i've got that let's see what else oh there's a uh, another base i found let's see what is it the abandoned city base this is just that big abandoned city uh, I found this also. It's full of spawners, which is kind of cool. Uh, I mean, it's cooler today. I found some silverfish, found some gas spawners, and then most of the other ones. Where are they? I have several extra restore spawners because I don't want to. I don't need to spawn that many things. Um, but I do have lots of spawners. I use spawner changers, I think, and a. I don't know. I have lots of spawners spawning in things pretty quickly. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Here's another automated hammering station, which I think is bottlenecking at the hammer. Yeah, it makes dust. And this is the only way I get redstone, is this dust comes in here. I get redstone, goes over here, it blocks it. And then it goes into this red chest. The red chest just cooks, it has a priority on the furnace, so it cooks what it can, and what it can't, it just puts in here. Also, if this is cooking a bunch of something, uh, it'll put it in here. So, I need to cycle things back around, I guess. So, I guess that's it. It's a lot. Uh, but it works. And I guess this is kind of the end of end of this mod pack. I've enjoyed it. It's it's hard, uh, but a lot of fun. All right, thank you.